So what we have today for our hip hop knowledge drop, clap, clap, clap emoji, is uh, a little something just about sales this year, since it has been a fucking weird year. Let's let's see how it compares to last year. Here's some information from the DJ Rob blog. Shout out to DJ Rob. I'll throw in the link over here if you all want to uh, follow along or check it out after the fact. You know, part of our game is to think about the business side, so let's do that a little bit. And this gives me a chance to switch things up so I don't have to just focus on DJing and, and you know, listening. So try to share some, some game. So yeah, so let's check this out. What's going on here is, uh, in, you know, this is a actual pretty decent and not always easy to find list of all of the number one hip hop albums of all time. Uh, this was updated a couple days ago. So as of now, there have been 219 number one hip hop rap albums ever, uh, according to the Billboard 200. Um, first one being in March 1987 from the Beastie Boys. That's, I wouldn't have thought that was the first ever album to go number one, licensed to ill. That's interesting to me. Um, you know, if you think about who's buying records, it's not too surprising that Beastie Boys uh, might have been the first ones. It's not always fair, but that's how it is. I mean, if you think about it, Eminem is the highest selling uh, rapper of all time by far, but objectively, I don't think he has the best music, you know, but whatever. That's, it is how it is, I guess. It's, just, it's good to know who's buying these records, I suppose. And then most recently, uh, Big Sean's uh, uh, album, Detroit 2, number one, the, the current number one, most recent number one album. Okay, I don't know, I actually haven't heard that. Let me know in the chat if you guys have listened to that Big Sean album. Some people love him, some people hate him. So, very interesting. Let's see what else we got here. We got a couple more pieces of info. So who has the most number one albums? Now this doesn't mean the same as sales, right? Because you can have one number one album that sells 200,000 units, depending on the month and the timing it came out, it just beat out everyone else. You can have another uh, number one album that went multi-platinum, right? So this is just looking at the number of number one albums and Jay-Z is by far ahead at number one four number ones he has 14 <laughs> number one albums fuck that's pretty impressive man eminem has 10 he outsold jay-z on those 10 but that's still a lot and then kanye and drake are tied with nine each who's gonna win that in the long term they're both going strong at this point you know kanye's pissing on all these grammys but uh drake ain't stopping no time soon he might have to shit on a grammy we'll see we'll see what happens to sales and then future got seven uh, which is pretty impressive because compared to the other artists on here, he hasn't been in the game as long. So that actually, he might outpace everyone if he keeps it going. He drops a lot. So Future might end up being the number one. I'm just going to skip ahead and this is a list of all, in chronological order, all of the different number one albums of all time. And I want to highlight just this year for a moment. So who was our number one? Here we go. 208 the first number one album of this year. Uh, so this is, you know, Travis Scott, Jack Boy's album. That's what started things off. This is pre-COVID. Then we got Eminem dropping, uh, Music To Be Murdered By uh, in February, kind of right before the COVID thing. That was his 10th number one album. Interesting, so longevity there. Uh, Lil Wayne with Funeral, I like that album. I don't know how y'all feel about it, but I like the Funeral album. Lil Wayne is hit or miss for some people. We got Lil Baby with My Turn. Lil Uzi Vert with Eternal uh, A Take. We got Da Baby with Blame It On Da Baby. So Da Baby's been killing it the last couple years. A lot of people say he's like their number one guy. Um, we got Young Boy Never Broke Again with 38 Baby 2. Quite a name. Nav with Good Intentions. Future, High Off Life. Pop Smoke, Shoot for the Stars, Aim for the Moon. That might be some of the coolest album cover there. I'm curious if you guys think that's the one so far. We got Juice World with Legends Never Die, and then Big Sean with Detroit 2. Interesting. So just kind of covering some of those things for you. We'll get right into the second half of the show in a minute. A couple other quick follow-up stats. So there were 17 number one albums in all of 2019, rap albums, for example. Through three business quarters, which is about where we are now, we've had 12 so far this year. So we're actually on the exact same pace as we were last year, believe it or not. This time last year, there were 12 number one rap albums, and then there were five more by the time we hit New Year's. So rap is one of the only genres that has not been dramatically affected by COVID, believe it or not. That's interesting. 
good to know you know how resilient that can be uh let's look at the number one singles from this year which is also kind of interesting so here we go just straight off wikipedia We've got arizona uh Zeravaz with roxanne first one of the year Roddy Rich with The Box, Weekend with Blinding Lights, Drake with Tootsie Slide. I don't really like that song, but, you know, whatever. It definitely was designed to make money. Uh, Drake got a whole team of people who know how to market that thing. Then we got Travis Scott and Kid Cudi with The Scots. I fuck with that song heavy, man. I really like that one. Doja Cat and Nicki Minaj with Say So. She was uh, killing it for a minute. Also had some interesting PR issues, but we'll see. Megan Thee Stallion with Beyonce, Savage. Woo, that's a good one. Uh, the Baby with Rockstar, 6 9 and, and Nicki Minaj with Trolls. I'm gonna withhold my opinion on uh, 6 9 for now. Maybe that could be a whole other show. Then we got uh, the Baby and Roddy Rich teaming up. Two artists that already had number ones. Probably, you know, their labels were like, let's make another one, rock star. And then, of course, currently, Megan Thee Stallion and Cardi B with Wet Ass Pussy. Woo! So, you know, as far as that goes, we've had 12 number one songs this year, with Wet Ass Pussy being the most recent. This time last year, we only had seven number one songs. So this is different than albums. It's actually a huge growth rate. It's like, I don't know, 80% growth or something ballpark so quite interesting shout out to megan the stallion with two number one hits so far also the retired Nicki minaj has two number one hits and for the men uh, roddy rich is the only dude with two number one hits interesting so for comparison this time last year we only had one number one hit from the ladies at this point through three business quarters and that was truth hurts by lizzo after that lizzo had several more to finish out the year to be fair uh and this time in 2018 we likewise only had one number one hit from the ladies from cardi b so it seems like the ladies are starting to dominate the game this year and i'm fucking with that i really heavily am fucking with that the rap game has been a boys club for far too long i think it's long overdue for the ladies to start taking over the game personally I'm trying to get as many on here as we can, see if we can break anybody. So anyways, that's what we got. Um, let's see, Triple Eight, never listened to the Big Sean album. I don't know if you're missing anything, personally. Uh, yeah, Tootsie's Slide was a dud. That was like the weakest Drake song ever. But if you are 11 years old and like to dance on TikTok, woohoo! All right, so whatever.